Hey everyone, this is Ken, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial, guys, and kind of explain more in depth in some basic mechanics that could really make a tremendous difference in your wrist thumb. Now, let's start off with some T flip flops, guys. I know you guys heard of that, and what that basically means is that once you press a button to send the signal to one spot, for example, this mechanism, is going to create a solid signal state until you activate it otherwise. So it pretty much acts like a really fancy lever. Now, one of my favorites here is a dropper hopper setup. Now, if you add a redstone dust there to activate instead of a repeater, um, due to the updates, guys, it just doesn't work. Now, reasons, I have no clue. <laughs> Technically, it should work. There really is no reason why this shouldn't work. But if you replace that with a repeater to create that same signal output, it works amazingly smooth. I mean, it works exactly as supposed to. No headaches, no problem, and you're good. Now, I've used this kind of design in a lot of my builds. And if you guys ever came across this issue where this mechanism just didn't work, that's probably why. And it has to do with recent updates. Because ever since like 1.7, 1.8, it was cool. I think even at 1.9, it was all right. After like that point from 1.10 and up, we just had tons of headaches. Now, I'm going to show you exactly how to build this the right way with no problems. Now, of course, this is going to represent your output. This is going to be the part where it kind of activates that T flip flop. So place a repeater there, a dropper facing forward with one block of space in the middle, another dropper on the side, it could be this side or the other side, either way, and another dropper facing the opposite direction. See, it's like a big circle and the one hopper going inwards towards that front dropper. See how it's going towards the right? Perfect. Now right here in front of that repeater, guys, that first dropper, you're going to place a piece of dirt right inside. Now the cool thing here is, guys, you can actually place a comparator right there going outwards. Over here on the side, if you want the signal to go to the sideways, and even right over here as well. Now, of course, it's on, but guys, all you have to do is press that button if you want to invert that signal, and you're good to go. So these are just different ways to set up this style of a T flip flop. Now, this is one of my personal favorites. I know there's a whole bunch online, but as you can see, guys, once you press it, it works amazingly smooth. And to really fix this problem, instead of having that rest on dust to activate it, just use a repeater. Simple fix, it technically should work fine across all boards. But like I said, guys, I want to show you another one that I also like. Now, let me show you a few of these. Now, this is the second one here, same format, but it's vertically, okay? As you can see, we got the same exact setup, and once again, the same issue came across with this one as well. It just doesn't work properly. And not for nothing, it really irks me because it really shouldn't, I mean, there's no logical reason why it wouldn't work that way. But the simple fix with that is making sure you have that repeater. Now, this is another vertical T flip-flop dropper system that works amazingly well and is extremely compact, and that's why I love it. So this is just one way to really look at it and really have this set up, especially when you're making tight designs that require very minimal space. Now, the cool thing about this is about one block in width, but by the other one is one block in height. Now, all you have to do is make sure you have your repeater and your output all set up. Once again, go about one block forward with a dropper facing forward. And this dropper that goes right between them two is actually going to be going upwards instead of sideways. Now, over here, place the dropper on top going towards the front with a hopper going downwards. See, it's like a big kind of, once again, a circle. Fantastic. Now, it's pretty cool because you actually can set the output to a bunch of different spots. And you can go, make it go forward, which is fun. Or you can actually make this go sideways. Now, make sure when that first dropper, where the repeater's at, you put one item there, you see? Now, like I was saying earlier, guys, you could really put this in multiple directions. So your output could be either left, right, or forward. 
And depending on your design, I mean, trust me, this makes a world of difference. Because all you have to do is just press the button to invert that signal. See? So if you want the backs to be off, you can just press that. If you don't, then you just press it again. I mean, such an amazing little design. I just love it. It's one of my favorite T flip flops, and I just want to explain more in detail about it and just kind of give you guys another perspective, another design to really open your mind. I mean, trust me, guys, this bad boy, I've been using it so much. I just love it. Now, right over here in that first dropper, you can actually have the activation sideways. See? Now, as long as that first dropper is being activated, doesn't matter how, you're good to go. But it has to be a direct activation with a repeater going forward. Can't be underneath or nothing silly like that. Has to be a direct hit to really create this kind of effect. These are just different ways to really look at this and kind of take this to that next level. Trust me, I love it. Now, this is another small one I made. And the cool thing is we have two droppers facing each other. See, I love this one. This is also a nice, fun one to have. It's another T flip flop. And as you can see, it works amazingly smooth. And these are like one of the three of them that I use the most often. I mean, I love using these. They just seem to work so well with a lot of my designs because it kind of really condenses it. Now, once again, guys, you cannot use a redstone dust to create this kind of effect. It has to be a dropper. I mean, it has to be a repeater facing the dropper. <laughs> See? And you're good to go. Now, enough talking guys, let me show you how to build this. Now, of course, you're gonna place your block there to represent your input with the repeater going forward. And you're gonna place a dropper going sideways. And of course, you're gonna have the other dropper facing the first one. So they're pretty much facing each other. Then it doesn't really matter which one, just place one item inside. And this is very important. You see where that repeater is lined up with that. You're going to place your comparator there and two blocks like so and that rest on dust. Just make sure the comparator is lined up with the repeater. Now the beauty here, guys, you could really send multiple outputs in multiple directions. See? So let me just search this around, add some blocks there, and just show you different outputs. You see, you can have that going forward, inverted. You can even have it going to the side right over here if you wanted to. I mean, there's just so many options. I love it. And it's just another way to really look at it and just be creative with it. I mean, you're not stuck with just one style or one direction. You really have multiple options. The other thing is, if you're going to set this up, make sure that rest on dust activates the block next to it. Or the block that's right behind it. And just by hitting the button, you can really see the activation between the front and the back and the different outputs. You can really set this up for. So if you guys have a really tight spot to really create this or really minimize your rest on dust, this is a perfect way to do it. Now, keep in mind, guys, this is a T flip flop. We have three versions here. I hope you guys like this. And if you need to pause the video, go back and just check it out again. Now, at this point, guys, we're going to talk about part two, which is the quick pulse, which is one of my favorites as well. And what we're going to show here is a hopper and dropper system, which is kind of done incorrectly a lot of the times. Now, as you can see, guys, one side is getting activated a lot quicker than the other. And it has to do with the simple thing that people always tend to mess up. And I don't want you guys to do that because it really affects the timing, the mechanics, etc., cetera, of what you want it to do. Now, we have a dropper there. And we have one hopper facing forward. And this comparator that picks up the signal when an item's in the, the hopper. Now, over here, we have the same thing, but we have a block behind it. Now, no matter if there's a direct signal going nonstop, if it hits the block, it's going to do a quick activation, and you can see the difference immediately. 
But if you have a piece of redstone dust or repeater directly hitting that dropper, it's going to lock the hopper and keep the item in there and the signal until that redstone dust turns off again. So make sure when you send that up, you always have a block behind the dropper or a block that's going to be activated to then activate that dropper. Now we're going to go old school here, guys. We're going to go with the typical piston and block kind of setup. And as you can see here, guys, we have a repeater going backwards and rest on dust in front of it. Now that's the wrong way to set that up. Now you would think the block will power the rest on dust really quickly, but it doesn't. It doesn't do it enough to really send the signal forward and activate that piston. Now over here, guys, we have the same setup, but the repeater going forward. Now, you can either use a sticky piston or a regular piston. Just make sure that the regular piston has a sand or gravel and that the sticky piston has pretty much any block you want to use on top that can send out a signal. And as you can see, they both work the same exact way, which is perfect. Now, if you put it on two, three, or four ticks, it's going to create a one tick pulse towards the piston. But if you put it at, at the first one, it then creates a zero tick, causing the block to stay up. You see? I want to keep that like so. Now, of course, if I adjust it between two and four ticks, guys, it just creates a delay, but does the same thing. But once again, guys, if you put it on one tick, it's going to cause a zero tick pulse. Now, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite RS NOR latches. What that basically means is, guys, that when you activate one side, you can't activate it again to invert the signal. You will have to go to the other side to activate it back to its original state. Now, we have here two droppers facing each other. And if you have a block set up, the block that has an item will activate that dropper. See? So when I press this button, it sends the item to the right. When I press that button on the right hand side, it sends the item to the left. See? But then when I hit it again, nothing happens. I have to wait till the other side gets activated to then go back to the original state. You see? It goes back and forth. Now, if you have a direct hit, like a direct repeater hitting that one dropper, it does the opposite. So once I hit the button, it goes to the left. It stays on the left. Even though was, I'm activating from the left hand side, it does. You see the difference? Block compared to direct. Now, if I hit it on this side, see that's off. It just goes right back. It inverts the reaction. Whereby if I activate a block that hits it, it doesn't. Now, I'm going to show you exactly how to set that up. Now, once again, we're going to have two droppers facing each other. And put one item inside Now, we can place the comparators going sideways if you want to, to represent your output signal. Or in front of it or behind it. Really depends on where you plan on sending the signal to activate it. Now, that's going to be the inverted style because it's a direct hit directly towards those droppers. See? But if you want to invert that, you just have to place a block. So once again, we're going to do the same thing. And you're going to notice a huge difference. Now, remember, I activated the left-hand side and nothing happened. If I activate the left-hand side again in this setup, it then sends the signal to the right instead of doing the opposite. Now, I really hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say. I know I'm trying my best to really explain this as best I can. And um, another cool way, which is kind of a little more unusual, is if you set up some items on top of it. Now, we're going to add some power rails or rail activators on top, which could be activated. Now, if that rail, even though it's going to activate both of them, it only works on the rail that's getting directly affected, not the one next to it or right across. As you can see, if I hit that button on the right, it's going to activate that first rail, which hence activates the dropper underneath. 
Now, if I add a repeater going forward, right on top of it, and I activate it, it updates the block on the right. See? It updates that dropper. Even though there's no block in front of it, it updates it and creates the same effect as a direct hit with the repeater, you see? You see what I'm talking about? It, what, what you're looking here is that it hits it at an angle. So it hits the item in front of it, but right down by one block. So it kind of hits things at an angle. Even though it doesn't really make sense, it really has to do with that. That it really has to do with updates. And you're kind of butt switching the other block at an angle. I More or less. Anyway, guys, <laughs> you let me know if you need a little more explanation. I would be putting some information in the description and check it out and let me know what you think. Also guys, I'm also doing custom PC builds. So if you guys are very interested in making your own computer but don't know who to go to, just send me an email. I work with all types of budgets and you know me guys, I always love to give the best quality. Anyway, let me know what you think. You guys have been super supportive and thank you guys for everything. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for watching. Remember to please leave a comment and to click that subscribe button if you want to join. Thank you.